Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will talk about three key figures of the classical Marxist theory in international relations. Vladimir Lenin, Rosa Luxemburg, and Leon Trotsky. If you would like to know more about Marxism in IR, you can check out our other videos. So, without any further ado, let's dive in. Let's start with Vladimir Lenin. Other than being the founder of the Russian Communist Party, leader of the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917, and the first head of the Soviet Union, Lenin is a key figure for international relations since he represents the classical Marxist theory. His interpretation of the Marxism as a state ideology later became known as the Marxism-Leninism thanks to his contributions. We can give the book Imperialism the Highest Stage of Capitalism, published in 1917, as an example of Lenin's works. Lenin accepted much of Marx's basic thesis, but argued that the character of capitalism had changed since Marx published the first volume of Das Kapital in 1867. Capitalism had entered a new stage with the development of monopoly capitalism. According to Lenin, monopoly capitalism is the highest and final stage of capitalism and a two-tier structure had developed in the world economy under it. In this structure, there is a dominant core exploiting a less developed periphery. With the development of a core and periphery, there was no longer an automatic harmony of interests between all workers, as argued by Marx. Because the capitalists of the core could pacify their own working class by exploiting the periphery further. These views were initially developed by Lenin, but it was further improved by Latin American Dependency School in the 60s and 70s. But we will get to that in another video. If you do not want to miss it, you can subscribe to our channel. In most basic terms, Lenin's ideology can be explained as seeing imperialism not necessarily independent from capitalist motives. Another Marxist scholar who appropriately associated Marxism with the theory of imperialism was Rosa Luxemburg. As a Polish-born German revolutionary, Luxemburg played a significant role in the founding of the Polish Social Democratic Party. In her scholarly works, she mainly emphasized the role of democracy and revolutionary mass action to achieve international socialism. According to her, nationalism was an unnecessary and even dangerous concession made by proletariat to the bourgeoisie, and that is why the nationalist aspirations must be underrated against socialist internationalism. This was an important point where Luxembourg disagreed with Lenin since Vladimir Lenin's doctrine of national self-determination simply advocated the idea that each subject nation of the former Russian Empire be given the free choice to separate from or to remain united with the Russian people. Just like Lenin, Luxembourg argued that advanced process of capitalist accumulation was driving the major capitalist countries into colonial expansionism, even though the mechanisms they use in such processes differed in nature. Considering the scarce sources and limited number of states, it was likely that at some point, much of the states would have been already colonized by great capital states, and that would cause, this time, an inter-imperialist rivalry, which is an overwhelmingly likely source of conflict. According to classical Marxists like Lenin and Luxembourg, the First World War can be accepted as evidence for this statement. Last classical Marxist scholar of IR that we will talk a bit about is Leon Trotsky. The communist theorist and a leader in Russia's October Revolution in 1917, in which the Bolshevik party seized power and integrated the Soviet regime, Trotsky was the leader of anti-Stalinist opposition after Lenin's death. Although he is most commonly known with his struggle for succession with Joseph Stalin for the leadership of Russia, his importance for the IR discipline was mostly about the intelligence he brought to the Marxist ideology under the name of Trotskyism. 
This ideology is based on the theory of permanent revolution, which simply emphasizes the necessity to see the economic system as a world system rather than a national one. Because even though regional and local forces were significant to some extent, at the end what mattered for the national economic development was the laws of the world market. Therefore, Trotsky argued, a permanently successful Russian revolution depended on the success of other revolutions in other countries, especially countries in Western Europe. Additionally, Trotsky supported the hegemony of the working class over the revolutionary class since the working class held the strategic positions in industry and other advanced sectors of the economy. So, that brings us to the end of this very short video about three classical Marxists, Lenin, Luxembourg and Trotsky. We will continue with the new Marxist theory in IR in our next video. If you liked this video, please do not forget to like it and for our other videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.